Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this episode. Boy, time's flying. It's almost the end of the year and I thought I'd get a quick episode in before the Christmas holidays. Thanks very much for joining me. Hope you're staying safe. Got a few stories to cover. Let me get right into it. Now, first story I'm going to talk about is a company called GridServe in the UK. Uh, if you watched my fully charged episode that I did about a year or so ago when I went to the UK and attended the first one, the fully charged live, um, I did interview actually the CEO of the company or CTO, one of the, the top execs, and he was explaining to me the plans a couple of years ago. So I'm glad to see that they finally reached their first milestone, which is their first. Um, it's a UK's electric four quart, excuse me. And what makes this unique is that it's like a, a large gas station, but only for EVs. So it's kind of the first of its kind. We've seen some large superchargers that are out there that have, you know, 20, 30, 40, even in China, 50, 60 stalls. So this is the first one that's not just only for Tesla. It's basically for everybody else but Tesla. But of course, Teslas can charge if they have adapters. Now, this is a 36 stall of different types. There's 350 kilowatt DC fast chargers. Um, there are uh, 90 kilowatt DC fast chargers. There's 22 kilowatt AC. Uh, so level two chargers, and then they do have six Tesla superchargers. Um, they're not sure, uh, I'm not sure in the article whether the 250 kilowatt uh, V3 version three type or not, but I'm assuming because this is new, they probably will be pretty decent. And what, what makes this unique is that you can go, you can plug it in charge, but then there's lots of things to do. Um, not only is the power that you're charging from, uh, a lot of it's through battery storage that's attained by large solar panels that are on the complex. There's a six megawatt hour battery storage system with five megawatt watt grid connection as well. And, you know, some of the other key elements is that there's a retail space, there's a coffee shop, some booths, there's a post office, um, uh, you know, a little bit of shopping you can do. There's a waiting lounge, they have Wi-Fi, they have, uh, of course, uh, restrooms and all that stuff. There's a dedicated kids area. And there's also a little bit of an exercise type of area as well if you want to do something while you're waiting and business meeting rooms as well that you can book and use if you want to get a meeting in while your car is charging. Um, and they actually also feature some cars and they feature some staff there that will talk to people about EVs, about what choices are out there. So if you're tagging friends along or family, uh, this is a great uh, area as well, a great stop that you could learn more about EVs. So I just want to congratulate them on their first one. I know they've got many more that they want to do. Um, I forget what the total number is, but it's certainly a lot more than one. Uh, looking forward to seeing more, more of these pop up in the UK. And if, if any of my viewers have visited and stopped, I know James went out there from James and Kate. He did a, a quick video on it. Uh, Robert uh, from Fully Charge, of course, went out. But if any of my viewers went out and experienced this, I'd love to hear your feedback. And again, congratulations, GridServe. Now, I haven't talked about busing for a while. Uh, BYD, though, has just closed one of their biggest bus orders in Europe. And this is for 259 electric buses. And it's in uh, Keolis in the Netherlands. No surprise there. They got a whole bunch of different buses. Some of them use CCS combo DC fast chargers. And these are a combination of 12 meter long buses and 13 meter e-bus models. These are all fully electric and they'll be around various routes in the area. Uh, the 13 meter range has upgraded battery technology as well going into the 2021 season. That'll provide extended range city to city capability. So not just within the urban center as well, but traveling to other small towns. Um, and the remaining buses from this order will be delivered throughout 2021 for completion. It's really great to see a big fleet like this on the road and congratulations on BYD. Now, one of the big news for this uh, last couple of weeks is the Aptera announcement. And uh, they kind of came all out and provided some pricing and opened the order books for their vehicle. What makes them unique is the efficiency that they get on these uh, teardrop or raindrop um, shaped vehicles that have a really low drag coefficient. So Aptera is a U.S. company. They've got some funding underway that they acquired, They're looking to do more crowdfunding as well. But they are now accepting orders and actually attended a Q&A session as well, where they talked, uh, answered a lot of questions about it. Now, these are not cheap vehicles. They start at 25.9 US and go up to about 47,000 US. They do have a never charge type of technology 
What that means is like uh, the Sonos vehicle where the, the whole surface of the vehicle is coated with efficient solar panels. In a day, they claim that you can get up to 45 miles of range in a beautiful, ideal, sunny conditions, which could be many, in many cases, enough for daily driving. So you theoretically could never have to charge it if you fit that bill. Now, these are two-seater vehicles, front-wheel drive, they'll have an all-wheel drive version, they have various battery pack sizes from 25 kilowatt hour to 40 kilowatt hour to 60 kilowatt hour to 100 kilowatt hour, with a range of 250 miles up to a whopping 1,000 miles on a single charge with the top of the line. Because of the efficiencies that they've been able to derive from this system, I uh, should be able to go get that is what they're claiming. Um, and 400 and miles for some of the other guys and 250 miles. So. Um, you know, I don't know what else to say. It's a low drag coefficient, 0.13, so one of the lowest, the lowest out there, even lower than Lucid Airs, uh, which is one of the lowest out there as well for uh, for consumer vehicles. Um, you know, I hope they do well. It is only a two-seater. It's not going to be for everybody. I have no idea how many units they're going to produce. Looking to start building these and shipping these, hopefully in 2021, is my understanding. Maybe into later, into early 2022. We'll have to see. I do wish them well. I love to see more companies out there. I would do your due diligence though on these guys, okay, folks? Uh, 100 bucks isn't much to put a reservation in. I think it's fully refundable, so the risk is low if you're just going to put an order in for now. Let's see how they do. They still have a long way to go. Um, they, they, they have only got basically an alpha prototype that they've been showing around, or a couple of them. They've got to get into more manufacturing, but they have a very simplistic manufacturing method and design. So I'm hoping that they'll be able to build these. I have no idea how many. I'll be surprised if we see more than 10 or 20,000 a year of these units. So a niche market, but congratulations to Aptera, and I'll certainly keep my eye on them. Now, quick news from Audi, the G, the cousin to the Porsche, Porsche Taycan, the Audi GT, the e-tron e-GT is now uh, officially started their production run in Germany at a plant there. It's the first Audi produced in Germany because the current e-trons and sport packs are actually built in Brussels, so in Brussels, Belgium. Um, the GT should be um, starting, the availability for the order books for this vehicle should be open in the spring of next year. So you gotta wait about six months before you can drop some money. It's most likely gonna be priced very high. And we don't have a number of any production runs, but I, th I think it's not going to be that many. I'd be surprised if it's more than 20,000 globally a year, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, this uh, the Audi GT, e-tron GT, shares a lot with the Porsche Taycan and that they're both based on the J1 performance platform that was developed by Porsche for specifically for the Taycan. And uh, we can expect it to be a really high performance model, of course. It'll be probably the most powerful electric Audi that's out there next to whatever they race with or test on the track. Um, it should be less expensive than the Taycan, but we'll have to wait and see what happens there. And more revealing and more specs will come out, I'm sure, next year. So good to see Audi continuing this. I really wish they would start cranking it down to the A4 line and to bringing some really mass affordability. They've got the MEB platform. They should start using it, but alas, they're not. So we'll just have to wait and see. So I've got this story about Toyota and I was actually excited to start talking about it. And then about two days ago, um, their CEO started talking about EVs and it really turned me off this article where they've announced that they're going to go into production of an all electric vehicle. Their first one based on the ETNGA platform, the same as the, the Murray. Um, or the Mirai, however you want to pronounce it, with a solid state battery. However, um, you know, I'm not going to go much into more details because then their CEO came out a couple days ago and he was bashing electric cars. He was basically saying that they would kill businesses, that they would demand huge investments and emit more carbon, carbon dioxide than fossil fuels. Well, this guy's obviously out to lunch. I don't care if he's the CEO of Toyota or not. This guy has no clue what the future holds, and I'm sorry for Toyota, but they are going to be left behind scrambling to pick up the pieces over this next decade if they don't get their proverbial stuff together. Come on, Toyota, and if you're interested in buying Toyota, please write to them wherever region you are and tell them you want them to get into the old electric landscape because enough is enough. Now, of course, this year has been a big year for autonomous vehicles moving forward, the Yardstick. Amazon is not to be outdone. They've launched their Zooks. It's an autonomous vehicle that uh, they purchased that company, um, and it's really to, intended to be used for dense urban environments. So areas where, let's say, the downtown cores are closed to ICE vehicles, where they could be banned 
or there's uh, areas where uh, no fossil fuels are allowed, let's say vehicles are allowed except delivery trucks and things like that for the time being. So this could be a great area to shuttle people around. Now, as you're seeing on the video and stuff, this is a no steering wheel uh, vehicle with two interior benches that face each other, kind of like a, an amusement park ride or something like that. Uh, the electric vehicle is not a consumer car, but it is a purpose-built robo-taxi. It can maneuver through compact spaces. It has four-wheel steering and bi-directional driving capabilities, so there's no reverse gear. It just goes one way or it goes the other, and it has four-wheel drive uh, to spin it around. Um, to ensure the safety, it has over 100 safety innovations including an airbag system uh, specifically developed for this carriage for this format and the bi-directional vehicle aspect of it. It'll have all kinds of cameras and radar and LIDAR uh, that really covers all the blind spots, eliminates them and gives a 270 degree view, field of view that allows it to track surrounding objects at all time. Uh, should be equipped with a 133 kilowatt hour battery pack that should give it 16 hours of use on a single charge. So certainly enough for a regular day shift of use. And it's currently being tested in Las Vegas, Nevada and San Francisco and at Foster City, California. So any of my viewers see this thing moving about, uh, I'd love to uh, hear from you. If you can send me a video or a picture, let me know what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear from you. But this is going to be part of our future as uh, autonomy moves into this decade and beyond, so continue to see more announcements on this subject. My last story is something different. If you're into farming uh, or the use of tractors, this will be of interest to you. A company called Monarch says that it's created the first fully electric driver optional tractor. What do they mean by driver optional? Well, it means that it's got some autonomy in it, that it can go by itself. And it's really designed for profitability in the farming sector. If you've been watching, folks, especially in the modernized country, the farming is becoming uh, a really hot commodity as far as trying to continue to keep farmlands open with sprawling urban development and suburbs buying up farmlands like there's no tomorrow. We need to, we need to keep these farmers uh, making, uh, making money and profitable. And this is potentially one way that, that will help them with their bottom line. It's a 70 horsepower, 55 kilowatt uh, electric motor tractor that offers twice as much torque as a typical diesel tractor. It features software that will not only make farming easier and more efficient, but sustainable and less expensive. Again, all things that farmers are looking for. Now you can drive it like a normal tractor, but Monarch, the company that's designed this, has, has uh, uh, built it so they can drive itself and work as part of a fleet of tractors. So you can pre-program this to handle tasks on its own and it uses special technology like cameras and sensors that allow it to follow farmers and other tractors. So uh, it's really cool. It's a three-in-one type of use vehicle. Obviously in tractors you can put different shovels and different front and different, me different mechanisms on these to make it multi-use, which is great. Uh, it's, a, it's a certainly a significant investment. Looks like they're going to start over $50,000 US. <clears throat> you can reserve one for $500, excuse me. So if you do, let me know. They say they've already got hundreds of reservations, so that's great to see. And they'll be delivering these in the fall of 2021, COVID and the world situation uh, pending that. So let's uh, keep an eye on it. If anybody does have an order for one of these and gets information, I'd love to hear from you. But again, I'm just super impressed of, of the breadth that we can take the electrification of transportation to all corners of the world. Now, finally, before Christmas holidays, I want to leave you with this. A good friend of mine, The Plug Seeker in the UK, you can go to his YouTube channel, and I'll put a link in the show notes as well for it. He's a great guy. He's a, a big EV advocate. He's been promoting it in a fun way. He's a big Star Wars fan, so you'll, if you watch his channel, you'll know what I mean by that. But he came up with this cool video, and his, he's got his daughter to actually sing it. It's called The 12 Days of EV Christmas. So... Please sit back and uh, spend a couple of minutes watching this video. It's a lot of fun. Enjoy.
Well, my thanks again to the Plug Seeker and his daughter for providing that great video. You know, another Christmas carol that you can start singing annually if you're following the EV industry. Certainly a lot of fun. Thanks again very much for that. And hey, folks, that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. I appreciate you uh, tuning in to some of the latest news before the Christmas break. As we head into the holiday season, I know the world is still... Um, a messy place. There's still a lot of things going on. We have to go a little bit deeper before we can start crawling out of out of the pit that is COVID and the pandemic. And so please, I encourage you to follow public health guidelines and stay safe throughout the holidays. Uh, do, do the recommendations that are happening. I know here in Ontario, we're going into a, almost a month long lockdown mode, so it's going to be challenging, but I'll continue to provide content throughout this and uh, keep the spirits up. Thank you for watching on YouTube. It's always much appreciated. Please subscribe if you have not. Tell others about my show. I'd love to love to get more subscribers. Love to he always hear your comments, your suggestions, your feedback. A thumbs up if you like the videos, all that good stuff. And of course, always, always very humbled, especially what's been going on to my Patreon supporters. Thank you very much. You know who you are. All the names come up at the end of the show. So I've already done my PSA. It's going to be an exciting year next year. And before New Year's, I'll come out with another quick show kind of talking about what next year could look like or what the next couple of years could look like from the EV landscape, where we've come from and where we're going. So look forward to that in the next week or so before New Year's. But 
before now uh, before that show again i want to wish everybody a very merry christmas and a happy new year seasons greetings in whatever you celebrate i know there's lots of different things going on at this time of the year so please all the best keep your family and friends safe do the right thing and until the next time i'll see you when i see you take care everybody bye bye